Now Warframe has a lot, and I mean a lot of bloody resources, right? Too many, some of you might say, far too many potato, too many to keep track of. Now it's constantly adding new ones in with different updates, especially when it comes to crafting new recipes, new Warframes, new weapons. They love making us grind for new resources. Hexanon is of course our latest new resource. Not sure if it's true, but someone told me that Hexanon means 69, which <laughs> I don't believe, but it is nice. Some of you have been asking, where is a good place to farm this resource? Where can you get as many of these as possible and then not have to worry about farming them again? Until, of course, to add another weapon in that then needs that fucking resource. Now, I know it seems like a little bit of a silly video, but you guys have been asking in the comment section, so here it is. It's kind of why I do this thing, YouTube. You want to get the most hex nuns as you possibly can in the minimal amount of time. So, I'm going to try and keep this video as short and sweet, to the point detailing the method that I've been using over the last few days to get a couple of thousand hex nun with ease. And basically not have to spend hours and hours farming them. Now first, I'm gonna follow the old tried and trusted method. You're gonna need a farming Warframe in your squad or if you're running solo, take one with you. Like a Desecrate Necros, a Pilfering Hydroid, a Pilfering Strangledome, you get the idea. Unfortunately, these abilities no longer stack with one another. Thank you, DE. So probably no real point in bringing more than one, but I have heard some people in the community still saying that Necros and Hydroid can still be a little bit effective with one another due to the tentacles getting the odd kill. Now, on top of bringing a Necros or a certain farming Warframe, you really should bring a Smita Kavat for its affinity buff, which can stack more than once. This will, of course, boost your resource gains. And if you add a resource drop chance or resource booster on top of that as well, then you can come away with thousands of Hexanon in one mission. 15 minutes into a Jupiter survival and I had over 500 Hexanon. Of course, if you don't have the resource boosters, you're gonna have half of that. Now, simply run one of these three missions on the new Jupiter Gas City tileset. Ilara, which is a low-level corpus survival. Chimeria, which is the dark sector, the infested survival on Jupiter. Or you can run the new Ganymede disruption mission entirely up to you now the results how much resources you're going to get in each of these missions is going to vary each time you do it so there's not a whole lot between these three missions it's entirely up to you which one you want to run now rng is going to play a huge part the dark sector chimeria has got a 20 percent resource drop buff attached to it so that's the mission that i have been running more than any of the others and i've just found it that little bit more effective now basically jump into one of these missions find a choke point on that tile set like a room with only one entrance funnel all of the enemies into that choke point i know it's a really cheesy fucking method but it works kill everything slash weapons would be a huge help and then let the resources sit on the ground for a while not for too long until you hopefully get that smita affinity buff now i've been told that to maximize your chances of getting the actual affinity buff with the smita cavat you should tick off, I guess your primary and secondary. That's why you see me running with the Redeemer because then it removes, I think the reload buff you get from uh, this meter Kavat, it removes that buff from its rotation, which means you have a better chance of getting the affinity one. Now, I'm not sure if that's entirely true. Someone in the comment section below can clarify that. Now, if you're a veteran, you already know this method. With a stacking affinity smita buff, you could have a four times or a higher resource boost, so you can get a lot of resources in one mission. Now, that's basically it. We ran Chimeria for 30 minutes, and each of us had up on 1,000 Hexanon, or very close to it, with the exception of one player who had no resource booster, but still had the Kavat buff, and I think he came out with about 700 Hexanon. Ganymede can be run solo, and you can still come out with seven or 800 after about seven or eight rounds with a booster and of course half without once you've also got that smeter buff now it's entirely up to you whether or not you want to run with a resource booster if you have the platinum then go for it if you don't don't you don't have to worry about it. it is still pretty easy to run without a resource booster and disruption is a fun game mode it's just <laughs> that its rewards are kind of pants now killing the flydalon can get you hex none as well it's worth mentioning that if you prefer to hunt i guess the big bad boss that you can kill in under three minutes entirely up to you but i prefer the method i've mentioned in the video i prefer running the dark sector come area of course i know there's plenty of players that love running alara so let me know in the comment section below what your 
your preferred hexing on farming mission was before you crafted all of the things and now you find yourself with no reason to actually use the Hexanon resource I guess until they release something in a few weeks time or a few months time that's going to require thousands of this resource now do me a huge favor hit that like button if you enjoyed the video or don't if you didn't subscribe for more Warframe and as always thanks very much for watching